Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about a topic that's gaining a lot of interest in the industry, and that's the use of extractable leachables as a powerful tool to gaining medical grade qualification. So for today, I'm first going to tell you a little bit about Toxicon and give you an understanding of where I'm coming from. Uh, next, we'll talk about medical grade qualification and really what is medical grade qualification. Uh, we'll then discuss biocompatibility testing as it relates to medical devices. And here, I'm going to highlight sample preparation as it relates to medical device testing. Uh, from there, that really is the bridge into utilizing chemical characterization and extractable leachables for medical grade qualification. So we'll go into that. And then finally, we'll conclude and open the floor up for any kind of questions and answers. So first, Toxicon, we are a contract testing lab headquartered in Bedford, Massachusetts. We also have another laboratory in Leuven, Belgium. Uh, for the last 35 years, we've been supporting the medical device and pharmaceutical industry with safety testing. Uh, we are FDA registered and 17025 accredited. Uh, do GLP testing and GMP compliant level testing in support of regulatory submissions or quality validations. Uh, and we have about 150 researchers. The organization is broken up into four main groups. Uh, microbiology, doing the antimicrobial efficacy testing, microbial ingress studies, uh, bio-burden testing, endotoxin testing. Uh, the biocompatibility group, looking at medical grade qualification, material selection, uh, biocompatibility of medical devices. Uh, also, we have our toxicology and pharmacology group, typically doing a lot of the work in support of an IND submission uh, for preclinical safety testing. And last but not least, our analytical chemistry, focusing on material characterization, extractable leachables, stability testing, things of that sort. So let's talk about medical grade qualification and how it relates to biocompatibility. Medical grade really is uh, documentation that supports the safety related to a material or the, um, raw, the components that are utilized in the manufacturing of a medical device. Uh, it increases the confidence in proceeding with the utilization of that component of that material in the design of that device system. Uh, it certainly also helps in understanding any potential failures because without any pre-qualified material, you don't have source analysis uh, to that biocompatibility testing if there were to be an issue. Uh, it's important to note that this doesn't eliminate the need for final device testing, and we'll talk about that briefly later on. So what exactly is medical grade qualification? It really can mean anything. There's no set defined guidance as to what needs to be conducted for a material to be medical grade. Uh, for the purposes of most end users, they're concerned with material going into the manufacturing of their device and how that will relate to the biocompatibility bio of the device. So for the purposes of this presentation, we're going to be talking about medical grade as being biocompatible. So what exactly is biocompatibility? The, door, the Williams Dictionary talks about it, a material performing to an appropriate host response. Uh, the Dorland's Medical Dictionary says that it's the quality of a material not having toxic or injurious effects. Uh, the ASTM definition says it's the comparison of tissue response produced through the close association of the implanted candidate material to its implant site within the host animal to that tissue response recognized and established as suitable with control materials. I'm not going to really get into that for this talk here. Uh, most simply put, Toxicon's definition is it's the property of a material being biologically compatible by not eliciting a local or systemic response to a biological system or tissue. So it's a very material-focused evaluation of the, uh, of the material itself for biocompatibility. Uh, in, very similar to the Dorland's Medical Dictionary, but in contrast to William's Dictionary definition here, uh, which is talking about a host response, it's important not to confuse biocompatibility with efficacy, which is you know, eliciting a specific response. In the Toxicon definition, what we're really saying is if you take the material and you put it into the body, the body's not going to recognize that it's there. So how do we go about getting that biocompatibility, that material qualification? Uh, early on, that was done by a lot of the class testing that followed the USP Monograph 88. Uh, here it is a compendial method that was specifically designed to qualify plastics, and it really has become an industry standard in qualifying many different types of materials. Uh, the Class testing really predates the term biocompatible, and here I have a chart that talks about how to qualify a material from class one through class six. So what you can see is you have the different use of different extraction vehicles and the assessment of different assays, systemic toxicity, intercutaneous reactivity, or implantation. 
So biocompatibility for medical devices, what is that exactly? That follows the ISO 10993, and there are a variety of different assays that are necessary to qualify to uh, ascertain biocompatibility of a material or a medical device. It starts with cytotoxicity in vitro assay, a variety of different systemic, uh, a variety of different in vivo assays like sensitization, irritation, systemic toxicity, a couple that we also saw in the USP monograph 88. Um, so medical grade qualification in ISO 10993, let's talk about that together for a bit. The 10993 series has 20 different parts. Uh, those parts that are specific to biocompatibility are in, highlighted here from parts 1 through 12. And they start with part 1 where you define the testing requirements. All those different assays aren't always necessary for every single device. Depending on the categorization of the device, then you would determine which assays are required to assess that product as biocompatible. So here we have categorization done by two main factors. The type of body contact, is it surface, is it a surface device, external communicating or implantable, and then also the duration of contact. Do we have limited exposure, less than 24 hours, uh, prolonged exposure, 24 hours to 30 days, or permanent exposure, which is defined as anything greater than 30 days exposure. And once you categorize your device, you then come up with the testing regimen. Here we have a variety of different assays that you saw on the previous slide and the different mechanisms that are evaluated for different device categorizations. This chart here supports for a global uh, submission, whether it be for a European submission or FDA, uh, what assays exactly are required for that agency varies. So the focus here in biocompatibility testing is really what happens. If we take the material, we expose it to the system, what's the end result? I mentioned earlier that the test article preparation is really a key aspect in bridging from biocompatibility to chemical characterization. Uh, in biocompatibility testing for regulatory submission, the test articles have to be in their final form ready for the market, and that's a very key important aspect. Most of the tests in biocompatibility testing is done with an extraction of the device, and here is really the key to linking to chemical characterization. Uh, extraction should occur under aggressive conditions. Uh, as allowable by the material and as acceptable by the regulatory agency. And they also talk about uh, utilizing various different extraction vehicles, polar, nonpolar, to mimic various different environments within the, um, within the body. So how does chemical characterization relate to this? First, let's talk about chemical characterization and, and more specifically extractables and leachables. Extractables are those chemical compounds that can be extracted under more aggressive conditions. So these are the compounds that can come out. It's the total universe of potential compounds. Uh, leachables are actually those compounds that will come out under simulated use conditions. So it's more about what does come out and more importantly how much of it comes out. Uh, here is actually the equation that talks about polymer mi uh, migration and uh, there's going to be a test at the end of the, the talk so please pay attention. Most importantly, it, what we're talking about here is you have a polymer system and all these different polymer chains, and you have different additives, different stuff, if you will, uh, represented by all the little red dots within the polymer system. So this isn't, the polymer chains are like your silicone, your, your polypropylenes. Uh, the, the red dots, we're going to talk into a little bit more, uh, those aren't necessarily the silicones, the polypropylenes, but something else. And it's that migration of that stuff that goes into the uh, environment of concern or the extraction solution in biocompatibility testing that will affect the various different mechanisms. So here really is the key to how chemical characterization can be utilized for medical grade qualification. Uh, and how do we go about doing that? Well, I said that the 10993 series is broken up into 20 parts. Parts 13 through 18 help guide us with a lot of the chemical characterization, the uh, evaluation of degradation compounds for different types of materials. It also talks about how to establish allowable limits for these leachable substances that we identify in all these tests. That's your toxicological evaluation. And we get all of that data using a variety of different analytical techniques. Here I showed a, a variety of different ones using some GC methods, LC. Here's a chromatogram of, of an extractable study. So all of the various different compounds that will migrate out of a base polymer will show up in these different chromatographic techniques at various different levels. Uh, this here is actually a material that in an extractable study was pre-exposed uh, pre to class 6 testing and was, was qualified as class 6 compatible. So let me go back. 
all these various different peaks doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. It's just the stuff that's coming out at some level. Here, we have a chromatogram from a leachable study. And it's the same exact material under different conditions, but what you can see now is only our main extractable, the highest peak that we had, shows up in the leachable study. And it's also very small, and that's why it passed the class six testing in and of itself. So what are all these compounds that are coming out? There are different sources for leachables. They can be different polymer additives, degradation products, residues, even primary and secondary packaging material that could cause impurities to come into the system. Here, we're focusing on what is the cause. What is going to affect my biocompatibility? What is going to affect my patient? And the types of compounds that we're looking for are a variety of different ones, as we mentioned with all the different techniques. Uh, lower molecular weight organic compounds, they can be attributed to different monomer residues. They could be from solvent residues, different residues from polymer treatments. And we would be able to detect them utilizing an optimized GCMS method, looking for different types of aromatic compounds, aldehydes, alcohols, ketones. Also, some mid-molecular weight organic compounds could be found using a different analytical technique, still a GCMS method, uh, but would be looking for different lubricants, plasticizers, antioxidants. Uh, in this method, we're looking for degradation products, different types of compounds here. The higher molecular weight compounds, again, some plasticizers, but we also have some fillers. We have some antioxidants, anti-slip agents, and that would be detected utilizing some LCMS methods that are optimized for those high molecular weight organic compounds. Like we said, the oligomers and even some degradation products. And then finally, even if we're talking about a polymeric system, uh, there's also the concern not only for organic compounds, but inorganic compounds. And these are from metal-based complexes that are uh, utilized in different catalysts, uh, fillers, even pigments. And here, we'd be able to detect those compounds utilizing an ICP method for those metals. So in summary, the chemical characterization is focusing on extractables and leachables. Extractables is identifying all the different potential compounds uh, that could be extracted into the model solvents under aggressive conditions. And then once we have that data set, we want to determine if any of those compounds may affect my patient. Okay? In leachables testing, we want to measure the actual amount of those leachates that would be released as a function of time. And here, as I mentioned earlier, we're focused on how much of what is going to be exposed to my patient. You know, does the exposure affect their safety? And does, that, does the presence of that compound even affect the efficacy of my product in certain novel materials? So we mentioned biocompatibility following the ISO 10993, assessing various different mechanisms for biological reactivity. Uh, it's very material focused and typically you utilize extractions of polymers in order to then assess for biocompatibility. Uh, toxicology is focusing on the uh, safety impact of various different chemical compounds of concern, and extractable leachables really helps to bridge that gap. Understanding and determining the leachates pre and post various different interactions between materials, sterilization, aging, uh, environmental factors, and this is really why I mentioned earlier the final product is what has to be assessed for biocompatibility. Something as simple or not so simple as a sterilization process can drastically change your extraction profile of a material. It, the extractable leachable testing really helps to characterize what may be of a safety concern, and that will be your information if you needed to do any kind of failure analysis. It can e even be helpful for material selection or changing a material through a process. And evaluating that data is best suited, as I mentioned earlier, the part 17 by a toxicological evaluation. It's based on that analytical data from the leachable study, or in some cases, the more aggressive extractable study. And it's evaluation of the exposure, different durations of exposure, much like the biocompatibility, different routes of administration, much like the biocompatibility that we talked about earlier. And collect and evaluate the related toxicity data, whether it be in the literature, from a toxicology study, or even from a structural activity relationship in silica review of tox. Uh, and then calculate the tolerable exposures. Those compounds, as we saw in one of the earlier chromatograms, doesn't mean that the product is going to cause an issue in your biocompatibility, but at certain levels, it may be allowable. So in conclusion, materials that are used in device design are being utilized in more sensitive and unique configurations. So understanding these materials throughout the development process can improve design and efficacy while minimizing any unforeseen circumstances. These technologies must provide function and prove biocompatible, and extractive leachable testing really provides key information required to better design integrated systems, including material selection, 
understanding how various interactions will ultimately affect the patient, and conducting a proper risk assessment. So finally, we can do what we were trying to do, and that's ensuring that the product will do what it is set out to do, and that's improve patient care. Great, thank you, everybody.